Very low jitter encoded clocking for high speed analog to digital converters using the ADF 4002 phase lock loop. Analog devices. Welcome to this training module on very low jitter encoded clocking for high speed analog to digital converters using the analog devices ADF 4002 phase lock loop. This training module discusses a design example using the ADF4002 frequency synthesizer to generate a very low jitter clock to control sampling on an analog device's AD9215 analog to digital converter. A phase lock loop is a feedback system combining a voltage controlled oscillator and a phase comparator so connected that the oscillator frequency or phase accurately tracks that of an applied frequency or phase modulated signal. Phase locked loops can be used for example to generate a stable output frequency signal from a fixed low frequency signal. A simple block diagram of a phase lock loop is shown in the figure. Typically a phase lock loop consists of a phase detector, a charge pump, a loop filter, a voltage controlled oscillator, and a feedback divider. The figure shows the main phase noise contributors in a phase lock loop. For analysis, SREF is assumed as the noise that appears on the reference input to the phase detector. It is dependent on the reference divider circuitry and the spectral purity of the main reference signal. SN is the noise due to the feedback divider appearing at the frequency input to the phase detector. SCP is the noise due to the phase detector, depending on its implementation. And SVCO is the phase noise of the VCO. The overall phase noise at the output are added in an RMS fashion to give the total noise of the system. There are several ways to optimize phase lock loop design for phase noise. Since phase noise is multiplied up from the PFD, which is the reference frequency, at a rate of 20 log n, reducing n by a factor of 2 will improve system phase noise by 3 dB. Therefore, the highest feasible PFD frequency should always be used. Choosing a higher frequency synthesizer is another way to improve the phase noise performance of a phase lock loop. Reducing the RSET increases the charge pump current, which also reduces phase noise. A low aperture jitter specification of an ADC is critical to achieving high levels of signal to noise ratios. Jitter generated by a clock source can cause the ADC's internal circuitry to falsely trigger the sampling time. This results in false sampling of the analog input amplitude, thus degrading the signal to noise ratio of the analog to digital converter. Extremely low jitter sampling clocks must therefore be utilized so that the analog to digital performance is not degraded because the total jitter is the root main square of the internal converter aperture jitter and the external sampling clock jitter. However, the sampling clocks are more often specified in terms of phase noise rather than time jitter. In system designs requiring low jitter sampling clocks, the cost of low noise dedicated crystal oscillators is generally prohibitive. An alternate solution is to use a phase lock loop in conjunction with a voltage controlled oscillator to clean up a noisy system clock. The ADF4002 frequency synthesizer consists of a low noise digital phase frequency detector, a precision charge pump, a programmable reference divider, and programmable in divider. The synthesizer works in a phase lock loop where a PFD compares the feedback frequency with a divided down version of the reference frequency. The 14-bit reference counter allows selectable REF-N, 
frequencies at the PFD input. A complete phase lock loop can be implemented if the synthesizer is used with an external loop filter and voltage controlled oscillator. In addition, by programming R and N to 1, the part can be used as a standalone PFD and charge pump. The PFD takes inputs from the R counter and N counter and produces an output proportional to the phase and frequency difference between them. The figure is a simplified schematic. The PFD includes a programmable delay element that controls the width of the anti-backlash pulse. This pulse ensures that there is no dead zone in the PFD transfer function and minimizes phase noise and reference spurs. Two bits in the reference counter latch, ABP2 and ABP1, control the width of the pulse. The PFD's output current pulses are filtered and integrated to generate a voltage. This voltage drives a voltage-controlled oscillator to increase or decrease the output frequency so as to drive the PFD's average output toward zero. The ADF4002 has a 13-bit N counter and a 14-bit R counter. The N counter allows a wide-ranging division ratio in the phase lock loop feedback counter. Division ratios from 1 to 8192 are allowed. The 14-bit R counter allows the input reference frequency to be divided down to produce the reference clock to the phase frequency detector. Division ratios of 1 to 16,383 are allowed. The N counter makes it possible to generate output frequencies that are spaced only by the reference frequency divided by R. Digital lock detects outputs either a CMOS logic high indicating a locked phase lock loop state or a logic low indicating an unlocked state. The simplified circuit diagram is shown in the figure. It works by measuring the phase error at the PFD outputs and using a window of 15 nanoseconds phase error to detect the lock state of the phase lock loop. When the phase error at the PFD inputs on five or more consecutive cycles is inside the 15 nanosecond window, it considers the phase lock loop to be in lock and outputs a logic high. When the phase error drifts outside of the loss of lock threshold, 30 nanoseconds, on any subsequent PFD cycle, it registers an out-of-lock condition. A complete phase lock loop can be implemented if the synthesizer is used with an external loop filter and voltage-controlled oscillator. This is particularly useful in either a clock cleaning application or a high-performance local oscillator. In this application, both R and N counters are to be programmed to 1. The very low normalized phase noise floor of negative 222 dBc per hertz enables very low in-band phase noise levels. It is possible to operate the PFD up to a maximum frequency of 104 MHz. Since the R and N counters are equal to 1, the reference frequencies equal the PFD. The charge pump output integrates into a stable control voltage for the VCXO, and the output of the VCXO is divided down to the desired PFD frequency using an, internal, an external divider. High-speed analog-to-digital converters, like the AD9215-80, are sensitive to the quality of the clock input. The clock input should be treated as an analog signal in cases where aperture jitter may affect the dynamic range of the AD9215. The figure shows the ADF4002 with a VCXO to provide the encode clock for a high-speed analog-to-digital converter. 
To realize a stable low jitter clock, use a 77.76 MHz narrowband VCXO. This example assumes a 19.44 MHz reference clock. To minimize the phase contribution of the ADF4002, the smallest multiplication factor of 4 is used. Thus, the R divider is programmed to 1 and the N divider is programmed to 4. The charge pump output of the ADF4002, or pin 2, drives the loop filter. The loop filter bandwidth is optimized for the best possible RMS jitter. Too narrow a bandwidth allows the VCXO noise to dominate at small offsets from the carrier frequency. Too wide a bandwidth allows the ADF4002 noise to dominate at offsets where the VCXO noise is lower than the ADF4002 noise. Thus, the intersection of the VCXO noise and the ADF4002 in-band noise is chosen as the optimum loop filter bandwidth. In the verified circuit of the previous page, the SPI interface is used to control the ADF4002, and the USB interface helps to control the operation of the AD9215-80. The controller board, the HSC ADC eval B DCZ, sends back FFT information to the PC. If using an, an analog to digital converter analyzer, provides all the conversion results from the ADC.